Now, the specific carbohydrate diet is the one that I use the most in patients with Crohn's disease. This is a diet of which there are no controlled studies at present, although the University of Chicago is studying the specific carbohydrate diet in IBD patients. It essentially consists of paleolithic dietary components. That is, with the exception of a couple of foods, the ingredients are those that hunter-gatherers would be eating. Meat, poultry, fish, eggs, most vegetables and fruits, nuts in the form of nut flours. I don't encourage patients with Crohn's disease to eat whole nuts because of the risk of obstruction if the nuts are not really chewed super well. In addition, there's aged cheese and homemade yogurt and honey, which is a part of the Paleolithic diet. Forbidden on this diet are all cereal grains, sweeteners other than honey, legumes, potatoes, and lactose-containing dairy products and sucrose. This is the case that really won me over to the SCD. A patient I treated back in the early to mid-1990s. It's a 28-year-old male with active ileitis seven years and at that time the biologic agents weren't available. Despite being on 40 milligrams of prednisone and 100 milligrams of azathioprine a day, he had fever, abdominal pain, bloody diarrhea, fatigue, weight loss, and recurrent kidney stones. His sedimentation rate was 90, his albumin was only 2.6, it was a little bit anemic, and the reason for the kidney stones was very high urinary oxalate absorption and excretion, 164 milligrams per day, which is a result of inflammation in the small bowel. After three weeks on the specific carbohydrate diet, he had no symptoms, no fever, diarrhea, abdominal pain, or bleeding. His sed rate had dropped to five. His albumin and hemoglobin were increasing. He tapered it off all the drugs that he was taking. He stopped forming kidney stones, and his urinary oxalate excretion fell into the normal range of 32 milligrams per day. And he stayed in complete clinical remission for three years. He then said, Doc, I can't take this diet anymore. I've got to have some starch. So we introduced rice and corn, and he was okay with that. And then he said, I've got to have some pasta. I come from an Italian family. I can't eat pasta. And that brought back symptoms. I mean, he was really intolerant of wheat. But having followed the diet and really healed and limiting his pasta, he now responded to mesalamine, which he had not responded to before. He was sort of able to work out a compromise between diet and drugs. Mm -hmm. I believe that diet should be first-line therapy for Crohn's disease. I start with the specific carbohydrate diet, and I have the person give it four weeks. If it works, then we continue with it, and that diet can expand within the rules that are established um, in, the, um, in this book, Breaking the Vicious Cycle, which is basically the way most people learn about the SCD. Some people are not able to expand. They've got to stick with a basic diet. If there is a poor response, which happens about 20 or 30 percent of the time, then I will try different diets. A yeast mold elimination diet, in which we cut back on fruit and honey. Dairy elimination. I have some patients with Crohn's disease in whom the only food they really need to avoid is dairy. And I have one patient, a child, who had done very well on a vegan diet. When these patients are stable, I'll have them perform structured food challenges to establish the greatest degree of dietary freedom. But I always want them to restrict sucrose and the high omega-6 oils. And most of them need to avoid wheat as well. Several years ago, I did a retrospective analysis of about 20 patients that I had treated this way in a one-year period. There was a significant improvement in symptom scores. Sedimentation rate came down. This was not just symptomatic improvement. This is disease modification. I measured intestinal permeability, the leaky gut, in 13 of them using a lactulose mannitol sugar challenge. The intestinal permeability improved in 84%. Started out very high with a reading of 275 and dropped to 74. Protein levels in the blood went up significantly from low to normal. That's the serum albumin. Their use of medication decreased. 
So they did not improve because they were using more meds. They were improved and therefore able to decrease the meds. And that's why that's the first approach that I take. Now, with regard to ulcerative colitis, the SCD does not really work very well for ulcerative colitis. There are occasional patients that have responded really well to it. You don't really get that information if you look online at what the websites state. But it's been my experience, and it was the experience of the person who developed the SCD as well. There is more information on the website of the Foundation for Integrative Medicine, it's mdheal.org, and at a website called pilladvice.com, which I created to deal with drug supplement interactions.